So my friend Gavin and I had to build the SpongeBob SquarePants Pineapple Doghouse in less than a week for an ultimate maker collaboration challenge. And I'll show you that you don't need any fancy tools to build the same exact structure, along with a secret pineapple symbol that I wish I knew what it represented years ago. But first, let's go over the rules. Rule number one, it had to be a theme inspired by a TV show. And that was it. We had two months to get this thing underway, but for the first month I had to go to Oklahoma and make a Star Wars epoxy table with my friend Johnny Builds. So Gavin and I only had a couple of weeks to start and finish a project that other groups had been working on for twice as long. And since I just finished building Star Wars stuff, I didn't want to do the obvious TV things like a Game of Thrones chair or a Simpsons couch. And even though Gavin and I had never seen a full SpongeBob SquarePants episode, we stumbled upon the pineapple house. And since I love everything tiki themed, I was fully in. And Gavin has a cute dog named Chloe, so we decided to make it large enough to be the most elaborate dog house this side of the Mississippi. Now you know that weird feeling when you instantly meet someone and become an immediate friend? Well, when the judges from the Maker Collaboration Instagram account asked who my partner was going to be, and since we had to build our own projects in groups of two, I just turned and pointed to Gavin and said, this guy. We were both at a YouTube maker convention together, and I'm not sure if Gavin knew exactly what we were signing up for, but he didn't decline and the judges made it official. So then the only question was how we were going to build this monstrosity with me being in Oregon and Gavin being in Montana. And yeah, everyone can work remotely nowadays and isn't digital everything amazing, blah, blah, blah. But there's nothing like being in the same workspace when it comes to hardware. Plus, I didn't tell you who was judging all of these projects for this collaboration. Tom frickin' Silva, like the godfather of this old house, along with his daughter Kate. So the pressure to deliver something somewhat decent is a must, although their knowledge of kids' cartoon shows is probably less than ours, and although SpongeBob SquarePants isn't on their radar, the challenges in building this doghouse seem to be worth the squeeze. So I decided to drive to Montana to make the greatest pineapple SpongeBob SquarePants doghouse with my brand new maker friend for the ultimate Instagram collaboration challenge. So Gavin and I started out with making shapes that were inspired by geodesic domes. One is that everything is made from simple triangles that can be easily repeated. And although we have access to a CNC machine, this could just as simply be cut on a chop saw or a table saw with a jig. And the second reason is that two triangles make a diamond, which perfectly conforms to a pineapple shape. And the fact that we catted everything up in Fusion 360 means that we can easily scale all of the pieces to fit onto two sheets of plywood. Gavin will go more into the Autodesk design on his channel, so be sure to check out that video after you see the final build of this video. And when I say after, I mean all the way to the very last second of this video. It would be great to trick the YouTube algorithm, which thinks that people only stay for the first 15 seconds of my content. So the pineapple dome structure is coming along fine for now, but we're also going to focus on the top part of creating the pineapple leaves. Moment of truth. Are you kidding me? Yeah! Oh, take it. Oh, look at that. That's, that is hardly any that's gap good. anywhere. That's good. Mm. Yup. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a pineapple, baby. Oh, dude. That is a pineapple top. So as you can see, we're first using Gorilla Glue Tape to hold the pieces on a flat surface together, but the real key element is the staples. This 3 quarter inch plywood needs to stay together, and the half inch staples on either side of the tape do a good job of keeping things flexible and strong. Then on the reverse side, we're sealing the gap with silicone. Now the worry was the doghouse was going to be under a lot of weight and strain, and we still have to cut out the door and windows and add leaves on the top. And we don't want any puppies to get crushed under a pineapple gravestone. So trying to assemble the wooden loops so that each of the edges held together was a little tricky at first. But again, we found that the tape and the staples worked like a charm to hold the structure together until we got the silicone squeezed in the gaps. At first it's kind of flimsy, and having a second pair of hands helps line up and stabilize each of the layers. But the convenient thing is that you don't need to worry with the last two halves how they're assembled, because there's only one way that they can fit together. And with it assembled upside down, it can hold one Gavin without it warping or cracking. Now I mentioned that there was a secret pineapple symbol, and an entire community that is very open to what a pineapple can represent. And all of the stories of pineapples in the world's culture, from the name of the Philippines, coming from King Philip II of Spain growing pineapples there, hence Philip's Pines, 
to being used as containers for cocaine out of Costa Rica are all somewhat understandable. But there's another community out there that has incorporated the innocent pineapple for their secret club, Swingers. So if you put an upside down pineapple on your front door, be prepared to have your dinner guests stay a little longer than expected. I'm just surprised that they chose a fruit which is so prickly and somewhat uncomfortable to hold. Why not a soft, fuzzy kiwi that's easily shareable? Let me know what kind of fruit you would pick for the rebrand of our fun-loving friends in the comments. Anyways, back to our prude little pineapple palm leaves, or as they prefer to be called, crowns. So we're doing a walnut glue lamination. This is much easier than steam bending, and there's two ways to go about it. The first is with loads of clamps, but then I remembered that if you use a form, it helps with both the compression and tension of the wood and leads to less cracking. For the leaves, I wanted to show you guys what we're gonna do. And the plan is to make two different leaves out of each curve here and because some of them have like a break and stuff in them like some of them split when we're gluing them up that's actually going to work to our benefit because we don't need them to be perfectly half and half we want some long and some short and so we'll just kind of trim these up and kind of like see how it goes along with it we'll just kind of carve them up and if they look good great if they need a little more trimming then we can just shorten them Let's carve away as for forming the leaves, it really helps having a bandsaw and making sure that the flat part of the curve is where the blade is cutting, if that makes any sense. I'm just sketching these as I go and trying to carve around knots along the edges of the boards and doing the final shaping with the sander. I'll show how we are going to attach these in just a bit, but first I want to thank you because if you've made it this far, it means that either you want to make a SpongeBob pineapple doghouse, are mesmerized by geodesic domes, or really excited to see my next screw up. All reasons are valid, and if you've enjoyed this so far, then clicking that subscribe button helps keep me motivated in filming, editing, and voiceovering this type of content. These projects I'll make no matter what, it's just if I should film them or not. So thank you, and let's get back to my newest mistake. Now when carving out all of the triangles, Gavin and I decided to make extras just in case we needed them. But in doing this, it meant that the rest of the plywood wouldn't be big enough to be used as one floor piece. So I'm using a side piece to finish the back of the floor, but even though it's off a bit, it should work out by putting a carpet or dog mat on the finished floor. But by having this floor, it's really going to strengthen the entire structure, and we're going to need it for this next part that I've been fearing the most, carving out the door. Now I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to do this, and Gavin was suspiciously missing, but I knew that I only had one shot to get this right. And if I've learned one thing from watching other successful makers on YouTube, it's laughing at them struggle with heavy and awkward shaped pieces of furniture. And I am now in that same category. I don't want to get Gavin's shop extra dusty, but trying to move this massive tortoise shell is so awkward and really hard to grip, and it took me a surprisingly long period of time to figure out that a piece of cardboard could slide enough on the garage floor. It was only after doing this multiple times for the entire day that Gavin came home and showed me where the wheeled dollies were. I used what was the form that we made for the glue laminate leaves, which was then carved as the door frame. But a smart little trick of projecting a line on this complex triangle dome is by tracing the door perimeter and holding the pencil flush to the frame. Then comes the point of no return, where I have to carefully cut along the line. But I played it safe and gave myself some extra space in case I sawed too much off, thinking that this was a wise thing to do. Not too bad! But the fact that I didn't trust my original line meant that I needed to sand back enough space until the door fit in snug. And on the front left side of the door, two pieces broke off from the staples. So after another delay of gluing things back together, I shaped everything until they all finally lined up. The front entrance isn't as important since the dog mat will cover the edge, but I wanted to sand everything so Chloe wouldn't get any splinters in her paws. After learning that scooching along plywood gets plenty of slivers where you don't want them, it was time for some paint. The SpongeBob door is this nice blue, and for the pineapple part, Gavin and I decided to build up the yellowish orange in layers. Doing this in the dark probably isn't the best idea, but I'm colorblind, so it all looks the same, uh, at least to me. The next morning. Sorry, but I just really wanted to do that. Now after giving it a couple more coats of paint, it started to actually look like a pineapple. It's nice that the knots from the cheap plywood really make the surface look like spots that an actual pineapple would have. And then to add the crown leaves. 
Since each of the leaves are different thicknesses, I traced the perimeter on the top part of the house, then did many test fits and routed out enough material to have each of the leaves be pushed into the slots. I made a backing board so that the leaves wouldn't fall all the way through. After giving the walnut a coat of varnish, I then put the crown all together, having the shorter leaves more visible and the taller leaves coming out of the center. And now for the most interesting part of the project that makes this build different than anything else you've ever seen. <laughs> Look at that cute little window. That is a window right there, man. <laughs> that is gonna be a beautiful window. So to make this a true SpongeBob SquarePants pineapple house, the key element is that he lives under the sea, and making the windows look like they're underwater somehow would be a unique effect for both the humans, canines, and sponges. After CNCing a 6 inch circular window frame, Gavin had some old thick acrylic that would really bring this effect to life. What you have to do is cut a thin inner frame which is then glued in place and make sure to use plenty of glue because it has to be watertight. I'm then taking an air tube from an oxygen pump that you would use in a standard fish tank and gluing it along that inside edge. It helps to have a bunch of large holes already puncturing the tube because what you're trying to go for is enough air to pass through that will create large bubbles. It's a balancing act of having enough holes in the tubes, but not too many that the pressure is reduced too much. I can tell you that putting a plug at the end of the tube really helps because it forces the air to actually go where you want it, which I found out the hard way after everything was all glued and sandwiched together, but eventually fitting a little cap at the end gave the windows the illusion that things were underwater. I like it. Make some more cuts and some of the bubbles can come out. But I like it. I'll take it. Okay, so we've got the door. We've got the leaves, the palms in. Uh, next, we need to do our windows. There's two windows on the SpongeBob house. One is on the left and it's kind of lower to the door and the other one's up and kind of to the right of the door, mostly up. Uh, but this is the perfect spot. I want to do them on the triangle so that they will have some flat surface for us to work with. So let's just sketch this out. After painting everything, I was doing such a nice job of splitting the edges of my jigsaw lines and only then realized that if I made a cut along the window that this would leave a cleaner edge. And remember all those staples that saved us in the beginning? Well, I didn't want to have to ruin any of Gavin's router bits, so they all had to be removed. Now doing this voiceover, I'm thinking that we could have incorporated two of the triangles that we CNC'd to already have these 6 inch circles cut out of them, but you would have to make sure that you lined them up in the correct positions. However, we weren't planning more than a day ahead for this entire project, and realizing that the Maker Collaboration submission photo was due in less than 3 hours, we had to slap the rest of this project together and hope that Chloe liked her new home. The chimney really helped the look of the pineapple house stay true to the cartoon images, and the red crosses are something that we noticed that accented the diamond pattern in the photos. The little details of reddish shadows along the edges aren't necessary, but we're trying our best to make Tom Silva proud. And with truly minutes to spare, with fresh paint giving it a true under the sea look, we assembled everything together, and seeing this crazy idea become an actual thing really took us by surprise. Plus, putting it on a wheeled dolly really helps move a pineapple house around the yard. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it just fits in. I mean, it's loose, but it looks Dude, those good. screws! I thought you were just putting holes in I was like, wait, that doesn't cut. And then you just put screws in them. <laughs> so, remember how we made our water inside of our window here? We can just... Put that in and the bubbles will start when we plug in our air. We've got our bubbles. Look at the bubbles go. And I don't know if I've been saying Chloe or Cleo, but almost every dog is going to love this crazy contraption. As for winning the maker competition, 
We weren't even mentioned. But that's kind of the goal, because if you win first, then you're alone at the top, and I'd rather be among the weirdos at the bottom of the sea. If you like this, then please share it with your friends, and I've got more videos that you'll enjoy right here. Thank you.